Yeah. Yeah. We are the best on the field. Yeah. Then we hit the field like Ooh. all day like Ooh. all night like Ooh. on the blue light, Ooh. on the red light, Ooh. big red light, Ooh. this ball light, Ooh. house call light, Ooh. hit a sound light. Ooh. gym 4 30 a.m i want y'all to know i don't do anything extra special on any given day but i just don't fucking miss wake your ass up so hopefully when you're watching this right now you get a little bit motivated to try to get moving in the morning i mean i can't tell you how much it's been a huge key to my success to this point and as i kind of go out to a new career you know continuing with the fitness now going into some speaking um, continuing to compete at the end of the day that grind that I've been getting in from 430 in the morning to 7 or 8 before most of the world wakes up has been paying off huge for me for years so I think just hearing some of that mindset on the way to the gym every morning talking to you about some of the information that I'm reading and also some of the information that I'm listening to kind of keeping y'all up to date just on what, what I'm doing in general so you can kind of follow along if you want. Uh, right now, I'm looking for my next mentor. Um, obviously, I had him in fitness, which was Arnold and Louis Simmons and Dr. Dr. De Pasquale and Dr. Serrano and the list goes on that I've reached out to over the years. And now I need one in uh, public speaking. And my favorite by far is Eric Thomas. Um, I reached out to Eric and I'm hoping to talk to him today. And this is how I did it. I said, Eric, ET, I need five to 10 minutes of your time to ask you five important questions so I can uh, better understand what I'm jumping into. That's it, that's all I need. Now, if something you know, gets better from that, if I can create a better relationship, that's the key. But at the end of the day, I know that's the guy that I identify with, that's the guy that uh, motivates me, and that, um, some some of my style is kind of after not quite as animated but a little bit after and if he can help me along the way then why wouldn't I reach out to him and uh, so I reached out to him hope to talk to him today pretty excited about that so as I go into this kind of new profession believe me the fitness ain't slacking because I'm just gonna put that in overdrive on what I'll, what I'll be doing uh, personally to keep you all motivated with the new website uh, but at the end of the day uh, if I'm gonna do a little bit of a different profession, I gotta make sure I have a mentor. So, you know, keep that in mind. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tape some of this gym session. And we're gonna just open up my life in general so you guys can see what I'm up to. So, have a good day and check out the gym session. It's about to be next. Peace!
what's up, what's up? So it's uh, 4.38 a.m. I got up at 3.30 today and uh, just kind of what I live by. Why stay the same when you can get better each day? I drove past, well, one, I walked past the gym in my basement. So that's one. I drove past the, the office gym. That's two. I drove past the old school gym. That's three. Three gyms that I could train at. Now, I drove an hour at 3.30, quarter to four in the morning, so I could get better. Uh, my buddy Tony Ramos is one of the best 181s um, in powerlifting history uh, that's been at Westside Barbell for 20 years. Extremely knowledgeable guy. So, like I said, I drove past three gyms to come to a different one. Now, granted, it's the strongest gym in the world. It's one of the most historic, hardcore gyms on the planet. But it just goes to show that no matter what level of lifter you are, no matter what amount of time you had in the game, you can always get better. And most people, one, wouldn't even fucking get up that early, even to train, let alone then drive past three gyms you own to try to get better at a gym that's on the other side of town. Now, granted, there was no traffic, so that helped, but it's about uh, 54 minutes from my house um, when I put it in MapQuest. So I just wanted to let y'all know that like, it doesn't matter what's going on, I'm still searching to get better as much as possible. And so this is like definitely an extreme version of powerlifting but I learned so much from the West Side Method, Louis Simmons, and all the guys that have ever helped me at West Side. It's worth it to me to get over here as much as I can. We're kind of in that 5 a.m. ninja time. They call uh, Tony Ramos the ninja over here because he just he's in and out and then shows up on meet day and kills it. So I've learned a lot from Tony over time. I'll probably get a little bit of video from being in here uh, possibly today and ongoing if I come up here once a week or a couple times a week. And I'm just looking to get better and learn more so I can teach you guys. So stay tuned. I'm about to go train. Thank <laughs> you. 
Almost there. my 10 year old on the camera for me. We're gonna make it easy. Everybody always talks about how hard it is to cook food, but this is the easiest way to make chili, which you can eat for a couple days, especially on the new anabolic fasting diet. So check this out. We got one pound of beef, one pound of turkey. I'm just gonna go ahead and brown that up. Go ahead and step back here, Alex. And then just buy two things of basically uh, your chili sauce right here, which is already a pre-mixed thing. You can get hot, regular, whatever. And it's easy as open these up, put these in the pan, and makes it make basically heat it up. You don't have to get that's a good close up for Alex, like that. Back it off then. We'll go two of those in there. I'll cook that till it basically gets hot, so we can see it kind of boiling a little bit. I'll brown the meat, and then I add them together. That's it. Basically, that'll give me food for lunch for the next two or three days, and it'll take me like an hour. So easy, chili. Meal prep Sunday. You don't gotta overthink it. Thanks. Okay. Don't you even think about rolling back over today. Wake your ass up! Yeah, heading to the gym. It's about, uh, it's like right around 4.30 a.m. Turn this music down. So, as always on Mondays, you can't have them Monday blues. If you do, you need to do something else or be working towards something else. So if you get up and hate fucking Monday, that means whatever you got going on, you ain't very excited about. So I had days like that from what I was doing. That was a big reason why I changed. I also had days like that when I was doing training back in the day. Any time in my life where it's time for a change, I can feel that. So, you know, it's exciting, especially now to get up because really I'm just working on content that I love and working uh, to help people. So that's it. Uh, I look forward to the gym, kind of keeps me on track. Most people that know me know I'm not like a majorly structured person. I wouldn't even class, classify myself as organized, but the organization of my overall life definitely is. And getting up and starting off Monday with a training session at five in the morning at old school around you know some really legit ass people always kind of sets me up for the week. Um, I'm excited about Corey G Fitness. Hopefully you guys enjoy this log. And really, I'm just going to like kind of just show you what I do on a regular basis. Sometimes I'm not that exciting. Sometimes I am. kind of depends. <laughs> so I'm about to pick up my homeboy Joe. We're going to hit the gym. Today we're going to work on some powerlifting stuff. So usually on Mondays, it's I'm doing Squat Life 5.0. We do powerlifting. That usually consists of a heavy back squat, some type of heavy deadlift. You know, we use the conjugate method, so we rotate both of them. And the conjugate method just is what the Russians used and what Westside Barbell used. It's the uh, rotation of exercises so your nervous system uh, can adapt to it. It's pretty sick. It's worked really well for me my whole life, ever since I met Louis Simmons. After that, I've been huge on GHDs lately. Trying, I'm trying to work up Check this out. So when I first started doing GH, GHDs, which is like the manual hamstring curl, I could barely do one. Uh, you know, I'm up to like 
three sets of 10 or three sets of eight. Um, I did two sets of eight holding a 25 the other day. I started working on that about two weeks before my meet. And man, a deadlift at the meet felt easy. 550 felt just fast. So I'm thinking that uh, those GHDs are paying off. What I need to start doing, uh, getting back into, is doing my lower stomach again with those toes to bar. So I'm gonna get back on that today. My goal is to get three sets of eight, at least three sets of five, holding the 45 on the GHD, and then continue to make my lower stomach strong. When your lower stomach is strong and your lower back is activated and your posterior chain strong for those GHDs, that engagement of the bar off the ground is nasty. And uh, if those two things get stronger and you pushing that belt right, it's a wrap. So wake up, have a good Monday. Hopefully you got your uh, your food journal and everything set up too, which we're gonna go over more of that. I'm gonna download the account. Hopefully you have your own account accountability journal just like me, and we're gonna get better together. So I'll let you know. peace. <laughs>
my girl Nettie who are, helps helps me with all the clothing at Old School. We'll give you a little inside look at that, how we're going through pictures for the website and uh, you know, just putting this marketing firm together. So got some good stuff on the horizon. Got lots of stuff going on in my head. But right now, all I'm worried about is training. So if you're just getting moving, go have a good day, get your ass to the gym, and then be productive. Peace. got done with the workout tony's a crazy motherfucker that dude done some crazy weight i mean his total at 181 was 2060 at his prime he's still fucking strong as shit anyhow we did some low box fucking squat good morning thing that i damn near fell over with 300 pounds but you basically low box squat bend over with your with your back tight and then get up shit's crazy he said he had maxed out like five plates at one point then I went through the briefs on, which um, I compete in whenever I do this like extreme stuff. Went uh, 495, no belt on a sumo deadlift, and then an all-time PR 585, which is six plates. So pretty pumped about that. Overall, I drove an hour out of my way to get here. I always fucking learn something, and it just helps me be able to help you guys so I can learn more things so we can all get better together. No matter what your uh, your sport is, it's, it's pretty sick. So... You guys have a good day. I'll be keeping uh I'll keep you updated on what's going on, but uh that was a good ass training session. Time to drive home, time to listen to personal development.
Peace. Uh, Jay's done some recent fitness stuff, and so when I came to him with anabolic fasting and started explaining it, what did you think, Jay? Uh, like you said, I thought you were a little crazy. Yeah. Going 15 hours uh, every night, every day uh, without eating sounded crazy. I thought it was going to be more difficult, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, than it For me, been. I'm a very routine person, and the fact that we're, we're hitting the gym at 5, um, you know, I'm getting into the office early, I'm busy through until lunchtime. Um, it, my energy's been been fine. I'm keeping busy. I'm not thinking about that I didn't eat breakfast. Yeah, eventually, be like eight to twelve percent body fat, and be normal, be healthy, but still be fucking strong. And that's kind of the key is what why I created this or kind of really stumbled upon it just off trial and error, which is what I've done most of my life. You're gonna drop some weight, but the simplicity of it. It's not difficult. Um, it's not as crazy as it sounds either. Um, 14, 15 hour fast. It sounds ridiculous. It Half sounds impossible. Yeah, it's, it's not nearly as bad. Um, but like I said, it's effective. The hype's real for sure. Lunchtime meal, uh, the same. And I, I eat whatever I want Friday night. On Saturday, I just flip flop it. It depends on whatever's going on in my social life. And that's. <laughs> Lunge and learn section. So, a couple things. Figured I'd lunge 400 meters, then do the video, so you know it's actually difficult. I want to make sure your form's right, so you go knee behind the toe, knee behind the toe. See? The other thing is touch your other knee. Whoa, whoa, whoa where are we at? Where are we at? Each time. Gotta make sure you touch the knee. I programmed. All the lunges, which are pretty basic. Sometimes you step out, sometimes straight forward. Sometimes you do where you kind of cross over. But at the end of the day, we want to make sure that the material is programmed, the lunges are consistent, and in a month that you are smarter and in better shape, it's going to be great. So dedicate yourself to the process. One more thing. I need you to hashtag lunge and learn every day so I can keep track of you. You just never know, I might be giving out some stuff. So, I'll let you. Somebody Peace. had to be the guy in my family that said, we're gonna change the way things are being thought about. We're gonna change the way things are being done. We're gonna keep the work ethic, but change the outlook on finding